So, good afternoon. Um, my name is Erica Molina. And as an introduction to the presentation, I'm going to ask all of you to participate in something for just the first two minutes. Um, and I'm going to guide you through it. It's a brief exercise. So, for the first step, I would like each of you to stand up out of your seats and close your eyes. I'm going to do a little bit of guided imagery. So, as you close your eyes, I want you to just relax your bodies and your minds. Begin to release the tension in your face muscles, your shoulders, your hands. Any muscles at all that you feel are tight, go ahead and relax them. And take a deep breath. As you're doing this, keep your eyes closed, but reach your arms up into the sky. Take a nice deep breath as you reach your arms up into the sky and you start to slowly wiggle your fingers. As you're doing this, picture your fingers as strands of seaweed and coral, flapping, tossing, turning, squirming as they're tossed around by currents of water. Slowly start to sway your arms with your fingers. Keep imagining that you're floating along the ocean floor. Feel the water as it surrounds your body. Now open your eyes, look at the person on the stage, and copy what they're doing. For the purpose of my thesis, I've defined installation art as 
a construction or assemblage conceived for a specific interior, often for a temporary period, and distinguished from more conventional sculpture as a discrete object by its physical domination of the entire space. By inviting the viewer literally to enter into the work of art, and by appealing not only to the sense of sight, but also on occasion to those hearing of hearing and smell, such works demand the spectator's active engagement. So I approach my thesis with a few main questions. In what ways can inventing and constructing an installation or environment be therapeutic? How might a client utilize or respond to the fundamental questions of installation art, such as audience engagement, multi-sensory stimulation to produce a feeling of immersion, <coughs> site specificity, and temporality? How might attaining and using unconventional art materials play a role within the client-therapist relationship and the therapeutic process? And what kinds of challenges might art therapists or clients face when working with installation art directives? As I assess the possibility of using an art installation art directive, at my internship, I considered setting and population. My internship at Community, Center, Community Counseling Centers of Chicago, or known as C4, allows me to work with individuals ages 5 to 65 with a wide spectrum of diagnoses, disabilities, and abilities through group and individual therapy. When considering which group might benefit from such a directive, I identified central themes surfacing within an adolescent teen girls group that could be addressed through the inherent qualities of installation art. This group consisted of four girls, ages 15 to 19, of varying ethnicities, neighborhoods, and schools. Main treatment issues included depression, complex trauma, history of abuse and neglect, suicidality, and interpersonal and behavioral problems. To understand how these issues could be addressed through an installation art directive, I examined adolescent developmental needs. McFerrin's view states, it's developmentally important for adolescents to express themselves to their peers and to receive feedback. Furthermore, Noonan found that adolescents desperately need to feel a sense of belonging, power, and identification with one another. And lastly, Search Institute identified 40 developmental needs for adolescents, including the following. Positive peer influence, creative activities, personal power and control, self-esteem, safety, and a sense of purpose. In the adolescent girls group that I observed, some of the needs came to light when they shared feelings of isolation, being invisible and unimportant, lacking control, having low self-esteem and self-efficacy, and generally not being understood. It was my belief that through an installation art project, the girls could create a sense of space to develop a sense of importance, an identity, and a voice. As a way to connect with the outside world, to receive validation, and to be witnessed and valued, the girls agreed to exhibit their finished installation project at the Art of Connection, which is an exhibit through the School of the Art Institute's Master of Arts and Art Therapy Program. Over the course of five months, the girls' group worked diligently on their large-scale embodying experiences inherent in only installation art that the girls were able to take risks in setting up an intimate space and trusting themselves to be vulnerable, to be validated, and to invest in such a physically involving and meaningful process. For the purpose of this presentation and time constraints, I have edited some of the visual and audio segments just to give you a brief picture of what the show looked like. Obituary of her heart. First name, her. Last name, heart. Age, too young to give up, but too late. Died 15 years ago in a place alone, but it's because it began to realize that good would never be enough, so it gave up. And it turned its back and stopped pumping. Can you find her? My God, can you believe? What we've done to you, 
Wouldn't they stop when you ask them to leave you alone? In all your fairy tales, how did the prince say you loved him? How did your father die? Was he a good man? Maybe someday, my girl, can you believe what you Stairs of life. Mother, you push me down emotionally as I climb the stairs of life. Physically and emotionally bruised as I bat day and night. One giant leap is three punches back as you toss your hateful words. Head spinning, heart pumping, ready to end my life. Many times, all I wanted was for you to see me. See me as your blessing and not as your tragedy. So as I sit alone and cry my eyes out, reflect on our past and how far I have become. As a child, I don't deserve all this. Look me in the eyes and tell me my past don't determine my future. All I want is you to see me in my point, which is at the tip of the stairs of life. That's if I can and will make it. so long, it was hard for some. Um, what we did was we stayed in the space for about an hour before we even like decided to start putting things down. And everyone just kind of sat quietly. We wrote responses out. We talked about everything. We kind of processed through it. And then, of course, you can't just spend an hour. So it took multiple sessions after that to keep kind of working through it. What were some of the reflections? So what were some of the reflections that they had after the whole process? Um, as I said, a lot of the main things that we worked with were needing to be seen and having other people like really step into their shoes. So at the end of the project, although not maybe every single girl was able to really verbalize exactly what they had experienced, because it was a lot, um, they really did feel like people actually heard them. And I think that was their main sort of healing or not, just kind of like a really important note for them. So. Do you mean like, how did the audience become more aware of their experiences? Yeah. Well, um, the box that you notice at the end of the, the video asked for people to write messages down, and there's other parts of the installation too where they could actually work on it, but um, we came up with about, I want to say 20 to 25 cards, and all of them were extremely important for the girls to read. Um, because most of the people were saying, like, I've actually been where you've been, or I see you, I've survived the same thing you've survived, or whatever it might be. So that was ten times more validating for what the girls actually expressed. Mm -hmm. Are you still working with them? Um, I am working with three out of four. Um, we actually just had a transition in the group, um, so a lot of different things have sort of uh, change the usual flow of how we work with them and work, we've transitioned them into sort of like a new teen girls group. So I'm still working with them, I'm still seeing them, but we've sort of officially stopped processing the show part. We're working on new things now, so. Yeah. Go ahead. This should be the last one. The last one, okay. I was wondering if you could speak to what was the most meaningful part of the experience for you? The most meaningful part of the experience? Um, I would say, Leading it as such an intensive, long-standing uh, project brought up a lot in me in terms of what my role is and what it means to like be with adolescent girls, helping them build things, helping them put pictures up on walls if it's their bedroom, and all the different feelings that came up with that. So sort of mixed between our therapist, kind of friend, because they're adolescents and they're, we built a really beautiful relationship, and then also not curator, but kind of like gallery setup. So there was multiple relationships, and I think that, that was the most meaningful.